Can you walk us through some of your key programs and initiatives? I would say right now we have two key programs that we're focusing on. So we're focusing on TNR. We've always done that from the start. Um, we were some of the first people to even get um, TNR cages over to Egypt, um, to Giza from the States. It was it was a big production to get them over there and it was really expensive. But once we got them over there, we were sharing them with um, anybody else who was willing to do rescue in our area. Um, so we were some of, we were probably the first people in our area to even start tackling that. So we definitely tried to share our resources with anybody who was interested in doing the same thing. So TNR has always been our priority. Um, but the other thing that we're starting to do now, um, like I mentioned before, was bring the community in and getting some sort of community involvement and educating. And I imagine just getting all those cages over there is uh, a logistical nightmare. Oh, <laughs> ridiculously expensive too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's basically like shipping any package overseas, right? That's a I, I mean, large item. I think we shipped 12 over there and it probably cost us about almost two thousand dollars in total it was you know by yeah. buying cages and shipping them and it was it was it was interesting <laughs> it was a struggle yeah uh, but you know, it was just... and then the fact that we were able to then go to other people um you know not other rescues necessarily because there really aren't very many but um mm -hmm. people were also helping feed colonies and things like that and we were able to show them Hey, this is you know how you can use this to catch the animal if it's sick or hurt and bring it to us or you know to get it tnr'd so because they've never done stuff like that before yeah it's a lot that's a lot that you do yeah it's a lot but it's worth it i mean i just see i just see things getting better there i mean it's very very slow it is very very expensive and like once a week we run into something where we're scratching our heads and we're just like how are we going to do this mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we can, you know it's baby steps and and it and it is like it's it seems to be making a difference can you describe some of your biggest challenges that you face as an organization today well, one of the hardest challenges for me personally even emotionally is that as I said before, there are a lot of abuse cases there and, and there's no law against doing it. And what's especially challenging for us is we are those people that when something really, really bad happens, we're the ones that takes that animal in. So we see all sorts of heartbreaking things. And people will often say to us, you know, why didn't you put that animal down? you know, why didn't you euthanize that animal? And we have, aw, see, they know, they know when you're sad. Um, so we don't euthanize the animals that we get. And one of the, if one of the main reasons is because where we are, they don't believe in euthanasia. So if there's an animal that is suffering incredibly badly, even if we know that it's not going to make it, we still take that animal in and we give it the best treatment that we possibly can. Even if it's just comfort and love and living out the rest of its days pain-free, because we don't have the option of putting an animal down there. It's just the veterinarians won't do it. We use the, um, a British animal hospital there, and even their vets won't euthanize an animal. So sometimes people, like I said, will come and say, well, why didn't you euthanize the animal? It's just suffering. And, and the real reason is we can't. We can't. We can't. A veterinarian there won't do it. So we often have to look at things, even though it might not be the choice we would make, that we are we are doing something really good because we're making sure that animal is not suffering in the streets, in pain, hungry, thirsty, 
it, it you know it might even get to see its have its first you know feeling of love and tenderness and so that's one of the things that we struggle on on the american side with is people asking us those questions and it's it's heartbreaking because nobody wants to see an animal suffer but a lot of times in our cases some sometimes the only thing we can do is keep that animal comfortable yeah i think that's a great point where um you know not everyone knows the what other countries will do right how they go about different things uh and they're just not privy to that information where they're living on a day-to-day -day basis right? yeah so, yeah and it, it's hard because you know sometimes somebody will do something so horrible to an animal or the animal will be hit by a car and we know we know in our hearts no matter what we do it won't make it but we still have to take responsibility for that animal because nobody else will and and it's our job to show that animal any love that we can give it any medical treatment that we can and just make sure it's comfortable well, that's the best thing you can do for them too yeah, yeah absolutely but it's but it's hard and it's a hard thing when people don't understand the situation 